The NFL Draft is officially five weeks away, and we are so excited to have PFF's lead draft analyst, Trevor Sikama, in studio with us. Well, you're not in studio, you're virtual, but you're here on this piece of content today. Trevor, we're excited to have you. I know uh, it is, like I said, five weeks away. Hard to imagine. How are you holding up? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. And I'm in studio in spirit. You there know, you that's, go. that's what really matters. We got the connection here. We're making good content. We're giving the Vikings fans what they want here. But uh, no, it, it's good to be with you. Sleep is still okay at this point. You know, okay. I think when we get to three weeks, two weeks, one week, sleep will be at a premium. But uh, we're doing okay right now. We're holding up all right. Yeah, it's funny you should say that because you did just tweet out about making your mock drafts and how that process is going to go for the next few weeks. And the Vikings making that trade with the Texans to get now two picks in the first round. How does that change your mock draft progress? Oh, man, I, I, I said in the tweet, I, I hope Quesi Odapalmenza and Kevin O'Connell follow me on Twitter and listen to my request because as somebody who does a lot of mock drafts and is actually in a mock draft competition once we get closer to draft weekend, uh, I need to know what y'all are doing. I need to know, okay, are you sticking at 11? Are you trading up? What is the ultimate plan here? And that's the thing for the Vikings is hey, I think you can look at so many different spots throughout the NFL draft and say, okay, these are, you know, pinch points, if you will. This is where things could really take a turn. And Minnesota basically holds the power of the entire draft in their hand. We have a feeling that the first three picks, two picks at least, but probably three picks, are going to be quarterback in this draft and then that might leave just one left on the board whoever that's going to be of the big four quarterbacks right minnesota is in the conversation to go up and get one of those guys but yeah, so is denver you know so is so are so are the las vegas raiders so maybe the new york giants right there's a lot of teams that could be in that conversation and so with minnesota now doing that deal with the houston texans they hold the power to give the best deal, especially for return in this draft season with those two first round picks. And so that's kind of why I had the tweet because <laughs> you just never know. Okay, if if they're going to trade up, they're going to trade up to four, they're going to trade up to five, they're going to trade up to nine. Like what, what is it going to be? There's just so many different possibilities of how the Vikings could now play this, which is a great move by them to hold a lot of power before we get into draft weekend. But mm -hmm. Makes my job a little bit tougher, but obviously it makes the scenarios a lot more fun because the possibilities are endless. What are the odds in your eyes that the Vikings trend towards quarterback in the first round of this year's draft? I think it's pretty high. I really do. I think that that's the reason why you make that deal. Maybe not a for sure we have to go up kind of a thing, but it at least gives you the power to make that decision. If a guy ends up falling a little bit in the draft, you know, you get to pick three, four, five, and somebody's available, you pick up the phone, you call them because you're interested in going up to get one of those quarterbacks. Now you have the ability to do that. You don't have to do that all on the fly. So I believe they made the move to get the extra second round pick with a quarterback in mind that doesn't have to be the case and don't have to do that obviously but to me i think it is more likely than not they will make a move to go get a good one you sign sam darnold and i believe kevin o'connell when he says like hey we like sam darnold then i think you like that for at least the first half of the year coming up his one year deal for him you give him a nice chunk of change to get in there and try try to kind of prove himself and i think it's a good deal for both sides even if they draft another quarterback right he gets to prove himself gets to play a little bit better get some game action and the guy who they draft whoever it is if they do that does not have to start right away and that's an ideal scenario mm -hmm. free agency the draft the off season as a whole it's just about giving you the most flexibility to go into next season as poised as you want to be in a lot of different spots and obviously quarterback is a paramount spot for that and that's why i think that uh the move to sign sam darnold yeah. plus getting this other first round pick Feels like that's the move to uh, go up and get a quarterback in this draft. Okay, so you did mention that there is a big four in your eyes, and obviously there's a few after, but but there there is a drop off. Where would you rank the top four right now? Yeah, so going through watching a lot of different film, looking at a lot of different grades, a lot of different analytical points that we have over at PFF. I very clearly came away with Caleb Williams as my QB1 in this class. I then very clearly came away with Drake May as my QB2. I feel like a lot of the conversations around, you know, oh, you know, he could be falling a little bit in the draft. Maybe he's not QB2. Maybe he's not even QB3. I think a lot of that is nitpicking. I really do. If you go back to 2022 as well, he's got the most big time throws in college football over the last two years. 
He's got an incredible arm talent to him. He's got that added mobility. Is the is is are the fundamentals perfect? No, and I think you see a little bit of accuracy issues there because of him, but that's fixable stuff, right? Especially for a guy who's great with quarterbacks like O'Connell is. I'd have a lot of, um, I, I'd get excited about that pairing rather than be worried about it. And so he's my QB two. And then it really is kind of a very close three and four between Jaden Daniels and JJ McCarthy. Daniels, very good outside the numbers, vertical thrower, beautiful throwing motion from his feet all the way through when the ball gets out of his hands. It is just picture perfect. It is very repeatable and coaches love to have that consistency from a player, not to mention his dual threat ability as well. Mm -hmm. McCarthy though, McCarthy's great over the middle. He's great off of play action. He gives you that experience and that ability and more of a pro style offense. Uh, when it comes to those third and long situations, kind of those money downs for those quarterbacks, mm -hmm. nobody was better than McCarthy over the, this last season when it came to those third and long situations. He was so somebody was not afraid to push it past the first down markers and those things just it really catch your eye with him and say man it makes me want to believe in you I think the best football is ahead for you so that's kind of how I would have it Caleb Williams at one at Drake yeah. May at two Jaden would be my three and then McCarthy would be my four okay. but it's very close between Daniels and McCarthy all right well the Vikings could also keep their 11th pick do you think that they can find value there at quarterback position they could. You know, I, I think that if you're talking about the big four, it seems as though it'd be a dream for one of them to last all the way to 11. And then after that, you get into that next tier of quarterbacks. And mm -hmm. depending on who I talk to, I get different answers all the time. Some people don't think Bo Nix or Michael Penix are worth first round picks. Some people think both of them are. And I think the variance for those guys kind of depends on the eye of the beholder, if you will. It just depends on how you think these guys can really play in your offense you know with, with Minnesota I really like the idea of Bo Nix being on this team I do and so like whether it's pick 11 like let's say it's 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 a scenario where it just doesn't make sense for them to, to trade up whatever happens to make that the case they're picking at 11 or 23 you can get a really dang good football player at number 11 and maybe even get a Bo Nix at number 23 and that would be a hmm. ideal situation for them I, I really love that idea or Minnesota. Now it's quarterback, so it's always tough when you don't pick that player as soon as you possibly can. But when you look at Nick's, just the way that he kept things on rhythm for Oregon's offense, the accuracy with him, how well he kept care, how well he took care of the football, the turnover worthy plays were so low. And yet, when Oregon's offense called for him to look a little bit deeper, fired a little bit more vertically, he showed you that NFL type of arm strength to be able to do it. And so I don't think that Nick's. And if Vikings as a pairing is being talked about enough, certainly we talk about them moving up more than we talk about them maybe settling for that tier two of quarterbacks. But if it doesn't happen, I still like the Knicks connection to the Vikings. And so that's the one that really catches my eye. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't think the Vikings have not all, not only have they not picked a quarterback in the first round in quite some time, but two picks in the first round. That, that is significant. Uh, and, and obviously, this free agency, it's really no secret that the Vikings have been super busy. There are 13 mm -hmm. new free agent names alongside people that guys that they have kept from last year's roster. Is there any or, or have there been any moves that you have seen that have made you change what the Vikings really need as far as draft, as draft needs? Yeah, you know, I think that a lot of it was sort of expected. We figured that there was going to be a little bit of an in and out with the Vikings roster. You know, I, I felt like Daniel Hunter might be back, might not be back on the edge, but you go out and you sign a guy like Jonathan Bernard, who had a really good year last year. So you kind of replace him one for one there. You bring Blake Cashman in to play linebacker. You get to sign him. Uh, you weren't sure exactly what the running back room was going to look like. And then you go get Aaron Jones from a division rival. So I think that they did a really good job of pumping up those kinds of um, roster holes that they had with guys that they are very comfortable with. It gives them that ultimate flexibility, which is important, especially when you're talking about maybe giving up some draft assets in the draft, maybe having less picks, something like that's very important. So I think the free agent strategy for them definitely mirrored what they did in trading that extra those draft assets to get that first round pick to maybe move up because now they're saying hey we spent a lot in free agency we went and got a lot of new guys it gives us that roster flexibility to say it doesn't matter if we will have less picks we can do that so let's go up and get aggressive and get the guy that we want so i'm not sure if like a team need really changed for them like mm -hmm. i think about 
getting a interior pass rusher, more of like a three technique pass rusher from a defensive tackle spot. Like I think that is still a need for them. Maybe you want to invest a little bit in linebacker. Maybe you want to go after uh, more of a solidified and more playmaking wide receiver three, something like that. And so those kind of come to my mind is even though some new guys were brought in, maybe if you had that pick number 11, a Byron Murphy, the second from Texas, a Jerzon Newton from Illinois, one of those guys on the interior to help your interior pass rush, that could be on the table mm-hmm. for them. But I, I, I don't think anything drastically changed. Like a, a, a new need didn't pop up for them where it's like, wow, right. now they've really got to address this or they're in trouble. It's more of a flexibility thing for them. Yeah, and if you take quarterback off the board, you in that in that early round, the Vikings do not now have a pick currently as of today, a second or third pick. So is there a position of value and that meets the Vikings needs where they can find that in the fourth round or later? Yeah, I think that, you know, there's there's a lot of different players that are depth players that I think could make sense at linebacker specifically, right? Linebackers may be an area where if you wanted to get a little bit younger, if you wanted to get some different players in there, you could. It's going to be a draft where the top linebacker is not probably not going to get picked in the first round. Hmm. So you could probably find, just as a trickle effect, some guys that you like at the early parts of day three. I think there's going to be plenty of good wide receivers still as well. So again, like I mentioned, maybe you want to get somebody else in there as that wide receiver three spot or just add some competition in the wide receiver room. It's a super deep wide receiver class. So I think you could definitely look in that area as well. But those are the two, again, you know, pass rushing defensive tackle, maybe. But it's always tough, right? Because if you're really good at getting after the passer, you're going to get picked earlier. Oh, That's yeah. just the name of the game. So it's it's tough to say this guy might really be available mm-hmm. for them in the fourth round. But like, you know, somebody that I look at, a Michael Hall Jr. maybe, uh, a Mason Smith, a Makai Wingo, you know, those guys mm-hmm. who are those interior defensive tackles who could be some names to look out for just because it's a lot of, there's a lot of defensive tackles in this class. Maybe they get pushed down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have a chance to draft them somewhere in the in the fourth round. But those are a handful of names that I think about when I think maybe early day three strategy for this team. All right. Well, I have loved your insight so far. Thank you so much, Trevor Sikama, PFF's lead draft analyst. And uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing what you decide to do with those mock drafts. <laughs> I don't don't hold me to it until the very last mock draft because it might be all over the place because of the Vikings. But like I said, if anybody's listening to this, please help me out. I'm going to be losing. That's when I'll start to lose sleep over it. If the Vikings don't make a move before our, our apologies. Well, we'll send you we'll send you some caffeine or something. <laughs> I appreciate it. It was good to be with you guys. Yeah. Take care. Thank you so much for your time.